has any thought been given to maybe reviewing the constituency council and its effectivity and therefore the money that would have been used for that could be used for other projects? I know that the constituency council as a new project would have been um, analyzed and monitored and uh, there's no reason to suggest right now that the constituency council uh, are not on track to do what they were set out to do and as such can be an important part not only of our social protection flow but of building a society that we want to see built and as such we are not mindful right now to, to turn back on a program that has so much potential. Like ensuring that all holidays that are not religious holidays fall on a Sunday. You know, we have holidays that are in the middle of the week. We just had two, uh, Monday and Tuesday, and you know when that happens, it affects productivity and so on. Um, and what is being proposed in this case, for example, is that the non-religious holidays, those we don't tend to mess with, but the non-religious holidays, put, make sure that all of them fall on a Sunday so that nobody loses any day off to celebrate these three black holidays. Imagine if this were to were, were come to that. I'm sure that alone would carry us to the street looting. You know, we all look forward to, to our several uh, public holidays. They're also lifting the ban on laying off of workers. In Italy, they had such a ban on laying off of workers in some sectors. And they're going to lift that ban because there may be some that they actually uh, think we need to do more laying off right now. Uh, in Italy, these challenges. It is not just about it, where government has the monumental task of trying to balance the budget, of trying to reduce the deficit, and still trying to maintain jobs and maintain a peaceful society. You would have heard our late Prime Minister when he delivered uh, the budget, I think that would have been the first one he delivered in 2008, where he made the point, and it's a point that we've held on to sometimes even ridiculed by the other side. But the point he made was that Barbados is more than an economy, it is a society. And that is more than a tagline. That really is a very important point for all of us to hold on to. Certainly as policymakers in the cabinet, that is something that we keep before us. That our, our country is more than just an economy. As Prime Minister Stewart says, it's more than a mathematics. Keeping our, our budget in place is more than just about the mathematics. It is about the people who are involved. It is about our society. It is about ensuring peace. It is about ensuring that as much as possible we maintain jobs, that people can, can go to school, that the transportation system works, that the garbage collection system works, that your health care system works. That is what is involved when we look at maintaining our society as well as our economy and both are important. We need to have a stable economy as much as possible but you cannot do so at the expense uh, of the society. And where we get a lot of criticism coming from different quarters that tell us we need to do X, we need to do Y, very often I think we are not mindful of the fact that we are not just trying to reduce numbers on a balance sheet but we are actually trying to do that while at the same time ensuring that our society, that we maintain what is good in our society and that we allow our society uh, to grow only in exceptional circumstances last year and this year there's that understanding as well only in certain exceptional cases will we be looking at supplementary that's something government has made a decision that we have to do if, if a ministry wants additional funding or they want to do a project that was not in their books before we're all told go back to your budget, go back to see what your program was for the year, see what there you haven't completed, what you're not likely to complete, see where you can get the money from that is already approved and allocated to your ministry and use that. <coughs> there have been criticisms about <coughs> government travel. I could tell you, having now been in government for three years, that over the past year we've made significant cuts to, to travel in government, both by ministers Many of us have decided that we are going to forego some of our some of our travel some of our travel obligations uh, this year. Uh, you know, we might have gone to things last year and we said, you know, this year we won't go. Maybe next year we will go. And many of us have done that. Many of us are have decided that right. we are not going to take a break to if it will cost government for us to travel, for example, for example, or whatever. We're taking those. Calls. I chair the travel committee. There's a subcommittee of cabinet that. Uh, look at travel for public officers and I chair that committee and I can tell you that we are going through those requests for travel 
uh, with even more diligence than before, and turning down many of them as well, because we're trying to make sure that any travel that occurs now in government at this time is travel that is warranted, travel that speaks to certain obligations that we have made, and certain things that we know are going to, going to help our program go forward. There's some things that Barbados needs to be present at, there's some negotiations that are ongoing, but there are other things that we figure we can do without going to that now. And I said from the ministers right now, we're all making those decisions. And the travel and other discretionary spending uh, has been cut. So government is, is, is doing, uh, I think, quite a bit in terms of cutting, in terms of cutting the spending. Uh, certainly, as I said, internally within government, and then you have heard and you will hear from the minister um, what that government proposes to do. And I don't intend to uh, update the, the minister uh, on finance. 